I was really impressed with bulky.studio's website. You'll see if I scroll, they have individual nav items that show a scroll progress. There's a lot more going on too with these cool hover effects, as well as a GSAT flip to get that little crosshairs going. But what I really loved is this individual scroll progress on each anchor link. And so when we click it, it goes there and all that. So I rebuilt a little prototype so that we can get this going ourselves and just wanted to see and share how to do this on your own. So let's get started. Hey there, Web Bay. All right, for the setup in Webflow, we'll start with each section. Now we're starting with a header section here, and this doesn't have anything special applied to it. It's all the sections in between. So work, services, about, and pricing uh, that we're going to add some IDs and attributes. Now footer and header don't get anything, but you'll see that the second section, which is up here, this is the work section. If I click over on settings, we see that this has an ID of section work, and it has a custom attribute WB section equals to work. Now let's inspect all the other sections like this. So we have section services, and this has custom attribute services. Then we have section about, it has custom attribute WB dash section equals about, and we have our pricing section down here. So you can see we're going to use our JavaScript to target these individual sections. Now the other piece is the nav bar up here. So inside of the nav bar here, we're using the standard Webflow nav bar, and we have our nav menu item here, and then some link blocks inside of that. And now each link block is going to have a custom attribute. If we see down here, we have wb-nav-link equals to work. And then each other one is the next section. So this is wb-nav-link equals services. And we can see we're linking to the page section utilizing that ID that we set. And then we have the about one. So I'll just show you this. And then we have our pricing one right here. It's very important that the value on this attribute is equal to the value on the section attribute. The last thing to look at that we're actually going to animate is this nav link BG, and this is just a background. So it has position absolute set to it, set to cover. And of course, when we do that on the link block itself, we wanna set that to position relative. We wanna set its overflow to clip so that when we animate this thing out to the left, it doesn't show up. And then the final piece for this setup is just up here in the page settings. I'm loading my code, I'm running it locally right now, but when you get this clonable, I'll go ahead and spit the code right in here. So let's have a look at the code now. All right, we've got a JavaScript module here, which means that we can import GSAP from the Skypack CDN using import syntax just like this, as well as the scroll trigger plugin. So that's what our first two lines of code are. And then we're adding an event listener for DOM content loaded. Basically, when our DOM has been parsed and loaded, we're going to execute our scroll trigger setup. So the very first thing we want to do is access elements that are on the page that have those attributes and IDs and classes that we specified. So we'll start by registering our plugin. We just call gsap.register plugin and pass in that scroll trigger object. And then next we're going to go ahead and grab those elements on the page. We'll start with query selector all for anything with an attribute name of wb-section. That's going to be stored in this variable here, which is then a node list of sections. And then we're going to loop over all of our sections. Now we're going to use the for each higher order function here. And we know that as a function parameter that can get its own function. So here we're gonna pass it as an anonymous function. And that anonymous function gets access to each section as a parameter. And then we'll define our function within these curly brackets here. So we'll start by getting the section name. And for that, we're going to use the get attribute method that exists on the section. And we're going to pass that attribute name, the WB dash section that we applied. And so now that value is gonna be stored in section name. And using this, we can then access the appropriate link based on that section name. So we'll use query selector, and this time we'll use template literal string syntax, and we'll pass a CSS selector that's an attribute, and the attribute is going to have a name of wb-nav-link, and then the value is going to be that section name. Anytime in a template literal where you see this dollar sign and then open, close, curly brackets, you can evaluate any of the JavaScript that's in here. So this is a really powerful way to generate complex strings. Once we have our link, we wanna be sure to get the background element that's associated with it. So now notice that on the link element, we're calling query selector, and then we're going to select with the CSS selector of a class nav link BG, and we're storing that in BG. So those are all of the elements that we'll need for this animation. If query selector in CSS selectors is a little bit confusing to you, then I would encourage you to check out my Patreon course on JavaScript inside of Webflow. It's almost at 10 modules now and has 11 Webflow projects. And I think you'd really like this one, 03 Tech Webflow, which is a little to-do list app that we build. In this app, we'll be using the for each loop as well as lots of CSS selectors and the query selector method to build a little to-do list app in Webflow. So you can see here, it's a great little project to learn how to do interactive UIs right in Webflow with JavaScript. So let's get back to the original animation. All right, so we've got all our elements now. Let's go ahead and actually exit the code if we don't get our elements. So if we don't find the link or the background that's associated with this section that we want, 
then we're just going to return and not set up scroll trigger at all because we don't want to get any errors in our console. Next, we need to set up our initial states and that initial state is pushing that background element all the way off to the left. So negative 101%. And to do that, we can use gsap.set, and then we'll pass the element that we want to set that property on, and we're going to set x% percent to a value of negative 101. Next, we'll go ahead and set up our scroll trigger. So we'll call it scroll trigger.create, and then we're going to pass our options object right here. Now, this options object gets the trigger, which is the section itself, and then we're going to set our start and end points. So start is set to top center, so when the top is at the center of the viewport, and the end is set to the bottom when it's at the center. So when the bottom of our div is at the center of the viewport, that scroll trigger instance is going to cease. We can pass scrub true to set the progress on scroll trigger to the progress on the progress bar. And then we'll have our on update and our on leave functions. So this is kind of where everything is going to actually happen. So each of these get anonymous functions as values. And we'll notice that in on update, we get self as a parameter. And self has a progress property on it that we can store in a variable called progress. And that's just going to be the percentage that we're done with that scroll from the top center to the bottom center. And what we're going to do is we're gonna map this to a percentage value that we can animate then with GSAP. So we'll calculate that X translation and that's progress times 100 because progress is a value from zero to one. So we'll multiply by 100 and then subtract 101, which remember is our initial value up here. And then we will call it gsap.set and we'll set the background x% percent property to our value x translation calculated here. Now in our function for on leave, we're going to specify what happens when the user leaves that section. And what we want to do is we want to make sure we shift that background all the way over to the right such that when the user scrolls back up, it will go looking like the user is going in reverse. So on leave, we're just gonna say gsap.2 and we're going to get our BG element. And we're going to set the X percent to a value of 101, which is all the way off to the right. The duration will be 0.3 seconds and we'll use power three in out on that one. Now, all I need to do is save and see the result. So we're scrolling now, we're past the header. And as we get into the work section, we see it fill up services about and then pricing and notice how like right when I get out of about, it just animates all the way over to the right, just like that. And then we have pricing here and we're out of pricing and it goes all the way over to the right. And we're in our footer or whatever. We don't need to show anything about the nav in here. And as we scroll back up in reverse, that this all reverses. If you want to get even crazier with your scroll triggers, I recommend you check out this horizontal scroll with parallax and velocity skew animation that I set up a few weeks ago. It's really taking scroll trigger to the next level.